Welcome back to Vegetarian Elite on Supreme Master Television and our special two-part feature on attorney, author, television legal analyst, and vegan, Ms. Lisa Bloom. Lisa explains how faith has helped nurture her humane heart and foster her activism in issues she holds dear. Well, I'm Jewish and the branch of Judaism is Reconstructionist Judaism, which is the basic belief is that you have the obligation to bring about the existence of God in the world by your good acts. Mm -hmm. So it's not enough just to sit home and think good thoughts. You have an affirmative obligation to get out there and to do positive things. Um, one of the core phrases is tycoon olam, which is heal the world. Mm -hmm. And the legend is, is that the, the earth is shattered and it's broken and it's our obligation to repair it. And you may not be able to do everything, but you can do something and it's your obligation to do that something. Impassioned to use her voice to empower the voiceless, Lisa has accepted invitations to share her expert viewpoints on numerous television programs. She has been interviewed by media icons including Oprah Winfrey, Larry King, and Barbara Walters. She often appears on CNN's headline news, Issues with Jane Velez Mitchell, to highlight concerns on animal welfare. Here, Lisa speaks on behalf of wild horses in the U.S. who are being forced from their natural grazing lands. Jane, these are beautiful wild animals, as you say. And what is the excuse for saving them? Saving them from starvation? Really? Because the horses seem to be very healthy. The ones who have died from the helicopters chasing them until they ran themselves to death tend to be pregnant mares and young foals. These animals are reproducing, they are healthy, and the real reason, as you say, is that we're clearing the ground, the land, to provide more land resources for cattle ranching. In other words, this is yet another sad consequence of the meat industry. We already know it's the number one contributor to climate change. It's a terribly cruel industry. It's damaging to human health. And now it's killing wildlife. This has got to stop. I think you get to the point where you just can't participate in it anymore. And I, I think about my dogs, and a lot of times I'm home in my home office working, and they're at my feet, and you know I just love them so much. And I look at them, and I think, I, I, you know, I can't, I can't be part of anything that hurts animals. I just, there's such a natural way to feel, I think. You know, if a, if a deer ran out in the road when you're driving, you'd swerve to avoid it. Right. Because you don't want to hit the deer. But yet you would eat a cow. Um, it, I think it really is fundamentally unnatural. The other thing about vegan eating is you're not really giving things up, you're just substituting. I mean, like last night I had bacon burgers, which I hate to even say, it sounds so weird to me, but you know, vegan bacon, vegan burgers, delicious. So there are so many great, there's a great uh, Vietnamese vegan place in Reseda where they make vegan everything, vegan shrimp, chicken, etc. It's so good. So really you're not giving things up, you're just substituting, you're eating the different kind of shrimp or the different kind of chicken or the different kind of bacon burger. When you talk about taste, there was, uh, I don't know if you've read Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer. It's his new, it's a really good new book that he wrote. He's a novelist, but mm -hmm. he decided to investigate eating animals. And he wrote, just wrote a book about it, which is very good. And he quotes someone in the book who said, you know, why is taste the one craving that we give so much paramount importance to. For example, how about a visual artist? If a visual artist wanted to torture an animal, let's say for a video, would that be okay? You know, I think most people would say no. Or if a musician wanted the sounds of a tortured animal screaming for some art that's music, would that mm -hmm. be okay? Most people would say no. Well, so it's not okay for hearing, for vision, but, it, but taste, Yeah, that justifies it. And it that, I thought, was a very good point. Between her television appearances, legal representation for clients, and speaking engagements, Lisa finds time to write her first book, titled, Think, A Girl's Guide to Staying Smart in a Dumbed-Down World. It is due out in 2011. You know, 
Honestly, I can't think of any issue where there are one act, eating meat, causes so many sad consequences. Damage to the environment, damage to the wildlife, the, the cruelty to the animals, and damage to your own health, heart disease, diabetes, cancer. I mean, the, really, the only reason to eat meat is because you like it, because you like the taste, and because you're used to it. But you take that versus all of the enormous consequences on the other side, it's just so irrational.